Well, good morning and welcome to live streaming worship here at Emmanuel Episcopal Church. My name is Father David Bumstead. I'm the rector here. It's great to be with you over the internet uh, as we have been doing. I uh, want to thank you again for joining us uh, today as we return to online only worship for the uh, next little while. We will be streaming again at uh, 5 p.m. for Evensong and, of course, joining with the Nunezes for Compline later. So I'm looking forward to all of that. But uh, for now, let's go pray together.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all, all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. The prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, may the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people, the prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. say together this portion of Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and reserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the best to shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness, for you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler. The Holy One of Israel is our King. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer, per, no longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. 
For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, or not under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves as the one whom you obey? either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves to sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations, for just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to great and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile the world to yourself. We praise and bless you for those whom you have sent in the power of the Spirit to preach the gospel to all nations. We thank you that in all parts of the earth a community of love has been gathered together by their prayers and labors, and that in every place your servants call upon your name, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever. Amen. Have a seat. Good morning, gents. Good morning out there at home. 
For many people, the Bible is a place that seems too far from reality, I think. It seems too incredible to have early humanity contend with a talking snake or a giant sea creature swallow an erstwhile prophet, just to name of a couple of obvious examples. And honestly, I get that at some level, but I think there are other places in the scriptures that reflect their great truth, especially as they show us the reality of the human condition. One of my favorites is in the book of Exodus. It, occur it occurs after the plagues, after the Passover, after God led Moses and his people out of bondage in Egypt. The Israelites begin their wandering, learning how to be a free people, a people bound together by their common identity and purpose as God's own. Their newfound freedom meant to glorify God to the nations. But as you can imagine, the wilderness is not great. In Exodus 16, the Israelites start to complain, and to me, their complaint seems as absurd as pretty much all human behavior. They tell Moses that there's no food and that things were better back in Egypt where they were stuck in servitude to the cruel Pharaoh. At least they had food there, they complained to Moses and Aaron, and they accused Moses of leading them out into ruin and into starvation out in the wastes. Their memory so short, quickly forgetting what God had done for them and the promises he had made in, uh, with them they longed for the familiarity of their chains. Strange. And even as they complained, without any prompting, God sends heavenly food to feed them. Again, it's a pretty spot-on rendering, I think, of human capriciousness and God's faithfulness. But we read from Jeremiah this morning, not Exodus, you might be saying right about now. And that's fair. But I think that little episode from Exodus might help us understand St. Paul a little bit better this morning. After all, as a Pharisee, he would not, not only have known the Exodus story, it would have been an important part of his identity. I think it might have even informed his view of sin, how he understood Christ's death and resurrection as the eternal Passover, liberating humanity from the bondage of sin. I think it also informs us how Paul reflects on what and Forbes how Paul reflects on what liberation from sin actually means. Paul is not impressed by the idea that now Christ's cross and passion have saved us from the consequences of sin and death, that the new life of grace is some sort of moral free for all. Freedom from sin for Paul is not freedom to just do whatever, and certainly not a freedom to continue in transgression. Rather, I think Paul saw that freedom from sin's bondage was actually a freedom to be yoked to the righteousness of God in Christ. Just as God freed the Israelites so that they would be covenanted with him for the sake of his glory to the nations, Christ frees his church for the sake of the same glory, with the caveat that his grace now dwells in us transforming us to be in holy people from the inside out. As he wrote to the Romans, once again, hear this. Now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification, holiness. And the end, the goal, is eternal life. Perhaps that very promise, that promise of holiness, sanctification, and eternal life, perhaps that very promise makes Paul's claim as difficult for us to stomach as a talking snake or a guy in a fish. Can it be, I ask, that there are people who willingly leave aside something as comfortable as human sin for the difficult work of righteousness in the world? Is it possible that when they do so they are guided by the same God that spoke to Moses in the burning bush and who dwelled with the Israelites in the wilderness tent? Would such a God even live in the hearts of people such that his grace might truly animate them into eternity? As a Christian priest, I've staked my claim on an affirmative answer. I say, yes, I believe so. And I say that in full recognition that these times we live in are troubling. 
My dear parish is in diaspora because of a virus. I'm once again preaching to an empty church. No one knows how to talk to one another, looking just one step outside of ourselves. No one knows how to talk to one another, let alone trust one another for our best interests. And this week, I made a, a moment of weakness. I made a fairly bleak comment to a friend of mine. He joked that things must be bad for such a bleak comment, which I'll not res, uh, repeat, for such a bleak comment to come out of the mouth of a priest. Of course, he was joking, but I couldn't help but respond by earnestly pointing to the hope that I have in Christ, in his eternal promise of everlasting life, his love, his work in and through us, even in the face of so many ills, be they viral, societal, or otherwise. As you can imagine, I got a little awkward. But the point stands, I hope. So God would not have his people stuck in Egypt or starving in the desert, and God would not have his Roman church remain in sin when the grace-infused life was right around the corner. May we not remain hopeless in sin as while Christ's eternal life calls to us, let us, in fact, look to God's faithfulness and care to deliver us from sin, to protect us even now, and bring us into righteousness so that his light may continually shine in and through us. To God be all glory from age to age. Amen. believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the People is Form 4 on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly and in the service of others to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. 
Comfort the heal, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, once again, it's great to be with you uh, this morning, and I appreciate your uh, kind patience and charity as we return, hopefully for a short while, uh, to online-only worship. Uh, I don't really have much for you by way of other announcements, uh, so, uh, solely to just uh, maintain us and your parish and your prayers and your brothers and sisters in Christ, that everyone would remain healthy and safe, uh, and that um, we are doing the same for you here. If you are celebrating the anniversary of your birth this day, which I know at least one of you are, uh, or perhaps during the week, let's pray. O oh God, our times in your hand look with favor, we pray, and your servant as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And for those of you celebrating the anniversary of their wedding this day or sometime this week, let's pray. Grant, O God, in your compassion, that having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made, they may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very good. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, holy food and drink of new and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith.
graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.